So Susie sang that song. Lanny did the burnt offering. Tribal officials were down there. It was the most touching feeling of brotherhood, sisterhood I've ever felt. We also did that here in Sasa because we realized that we could perhaps set an example to other towns around Northern California to do a similar thing, to honor the ancestors. Because uh, you, you go to the library and you want to find out about the history of Sausalito or the history of Mill Valley or the history of San Rafael, it's 95% about the white history of 200 years. Well, they found rooms that are going back five and 7,000 years in Marin County. Do we have something to learn from people that lived here and took care of the land? I think so. There were good Indians, there were bad Indians. Columbus came and found uh, two different tribes. He found the evil bad guys, and he found the really angelic, wonderful guys. But guess what? It was the same tribe, just in the two different times. They had the qualities we all have. Good, bad, angel, devil. We all have the stuff to work out. Indian people are no different. The way they go about it is different sometimes. There's a whole different sense of time. So what kind of photography do you do? I've done a lot of photography of contemporary Native Americans, powwows, ceremonies, protests, protests against some of the water and power companies, protests outside of Calpine at their headquarters in San Jose because they want to drill up at Medicine Lake, which is a holy spot to the Pitt River tribes. That's on a practical level, on a spiritual level. Medicine Lake is a holy land to the Pitt River tribes. There's about, I think, five different tribes. I think their names all start with an A, or somewhat unpronounceable. They hold Mount Shasta as a very sacred site, along with three other tribes. They say that the waters are very healing. What message do you feel like you really want to get across tonight? Maybe holding in mind what I do today. I do for the seventh generation. Whatever you do in your individual and family and group actions, hold that up to a set of rose or purple colored glasses or whatever you want and filter all your actions and activities and decisions through that. I truly believe, as most Native people do, that we are all connected. We're all one. I suppose the ones that have given up their ancestry and their their religion and their heritage and have accepted just Christianity, although many Indian people are both Christian and tribal in their religion. But the ones that haven't, that still have some taste of uh, reverence for their tribal ways and religion, and realize that everything's connected. All is one. That's why they felt that the animals and the trees and the rocks were their brothers and sisters, because there's a connection. Everything affects everything. For every force, there's an equal and opposite action. I don't know much about the seventh generation. I, I do know that amongst uh, quite a few tribes, there's a lot of prophecies being fulfilled. One of them, the white buffalo, that changes colors. There's so many out there besides just the seventh generation that's coming to light. I mean, look at the Mayan talk of 2012. There's a bunch that are, that are pretty much talking the same thing. Some of what Neil said about, well... You know, it's time to make a decision. We're either going to live right or we're not going to live at all. We have to make sure, as those of us that are interested in helping them, go about it in a right manner. Um, that's a phrase that is common to a lot of Indian people and tribes. Go about things in a right manner, in a holy manner, in a sacred way. Figure out what the next thing to do is, or what's in front of you to do if it's the right thing to do. Do that. So you've mastered it. We are still strong. We never quit. We never lay down. We never give up. We are still strong. Playing that song over and over and over again got me through the hardest point of my whole life when I thought I was going to be tossed out in the street with no friends, no money, and nowhere to go. And I played that and played that and played that, and it saved my tail. We are still strong. A proud people. We are still strong. The warrior spirit, then, now, onward. See and feel the connection to those that have gone by, the connection to earth, the connection to sky. See it in their faces, in every step they take in the dance, in the drum. The great red road, 
We can lead America back to the vision of the Founding Fathers, British gentlemen and Iroquois elders alike. The spiritual leaders in Europe were in telepathic touch with their counterpart among the American Indians. I knew that for a long time. I can't tell you how I knew that. I'd never read it, I'd never heard it, but I knew it. And in 1995, at the 50th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations in San Francisco, I got to talk to Jake Swamp, a chief of the Mohawk Nation, which is one of the nations of the Iroquois. And I asked him, point blank, I said, Jake, is there anything in the Iroquois teachings, in the Mohawk teachings, about that the leaders, the spiritual leaders in Europe and in the United States, what was to become the United States, being in telepathic communication with each other on how to plan this country as a spiritual haven. And he said, yes, it is in our teaching. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. We need to start thinking about that and going back into our antecedents and light the torch again. It's not out. There's a few sparks left. It's people like us. I'm really encouraged to see younger people like you guys in this. We're the ones that can fan that flame and be the light of the world, which doesn't make us better than another country, as Ronald Reagan said and other people said. I don't believe we're better than anybody else. But we have our role. Our role is to light, 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 light